everyone, thanks for joining me today. If you're new here, I'm Dr. Lewis Cran, family medicine physician. And in today's video, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about booster shots. Because recently, both Moderna and Johnson & Johnson applied for and were granted emergency use authorization for booster shots for their respective vaccines. We'll talk a little bit about some of the differences in the shots, as well as talk a little bit about a novel approach that the FDA approved, which is mixing of vaccine manufacturers. This wasn't really something that was requested by any of the manufacturers, but based on the data, the FDA felt it necessary to approve the ability to mix and match. We'll talk a little bit about that more in detail. So first, let's talk about Moderna. Moderna submitted a request for a third shot six months after the primary series, but interestingly, they request a lower dose of the vaccine. The initial series of Moderna is done with a 100 microgram dose, and in their booster trials, they actually used a 50 microgram dose. And what they showed was the 50 microgram dose seems to be just as effective in raising neutralizing antibody levels, but seems to cause fewer side effects. Now that's gonna be a welcome experience for those of you who already got the Moderna vaccine and may have experienced some fairly significant side effects after the second dose. Um, I'll link my video up top here uh, of how my experience went and it wasn't the greatest, but still better than getting COVID by a long shot. The other thing that might contribute to side effects being lessened um, after the third dose is that there's a longer period of time, obviously, between the second and third dose because they requested that dose be given at least six months after the primary series. All of that put together seems to have lessened the incidence of side effects. Also, for the mRNA vaccines, there was no indication of any higher incidence, in fact, maybe even a lower incidence based on some of the information presented of myocarditis. If you'll recall, myocarditis is an inflammation around the heart um, that many people don't have symptoms for, but some people can have fairly significant symptoms and even potentially end up in the hospital. So it's good that they did not see any increased incidence of this beyond what's already been reported. And again, it's always important to keep in mind that the incidence of myocarditis is even more common with getting COVID itself. So overall, a pretty impressive picture from Moderna shows excellent efficacy after the third dose in raising the neutralizing antibodies and providing protection against infection as well as severe disease and death. Now, let's talk a little bit about Johnson & Johnson. Johnson & Johnson also presented information about their booster dose, but there are some key differences here. Unlike Moderna and Pfizer, which have asked for authorization to give their booster dose six months after the primary series, Johnson & Johnson was actually authorized to give their dose two months after the initial injection. Now, there's a lot of reasons for this. Um, the most important one being that, unfortunately, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine just isn't showing the efficacy that we would have hoped for. It pales in comparison to both Moderna and Pfizer as well at how well it prevents both infection as well as severe disease and death. So getting a booster dose a little bit sooner is gonna help anybody who had previously gotten the Johnson & Johnson vaccine gain better protection. And if you'll recall, we still have the Pfizer vaccine that was approved several weeks ago for a third dose six months after the primary series. Now, who did they authorize to get these vaccines? Very similar to the Pfizer criteria, the FDA authorized both the Moderna and Johnson & Johnson booster shots be given to individuals 65 years and older, as well as any individual 18 years and older may get the vaccine if they have certain chronic medical conditions. That includes those conditions that are more likely to lead to severe disease, such as respiratory illnesses, heart disease, um, diabetes, obesity, and there are several others. I'll put a link in the description down below to the CDC uh, criteria for this. They also followed with previous recommendations to allow the booster dose for individuals who have a high risk of occupational exposure, uh, including healthcare workers, obviously, um, teachers, uh, public health workers, um, and other individuals who may just by the basis of their occupation have a high risk for exposure for COVID-19. Those individuals may get the vaccine as well. 
they put the caveat on there of may and recommend a conversation with your healthcare provider before deciding if the vaccine booster is right for you. Now, a unique twist that was thrown at us through this approval process was actually the ability to mix and match vaccine manufacturers. This wasn't necessarily something that was requested obviously by any of the vaccine manufacturers, but in looking at the data, there was a strong indication that some vaccines might benefit from a booster from one of the others. In particular, what I'm talking about here is Johnson & Johnson, because again, as I mentioned, Johnson & Johnson really isn't shown to be that efficacious at either preventing infection or unfortunately at preventing severe disease and death. But what was seen was getting a booster by one of the other two manufacturers, vaccines, either Moderna or Pfizer, actually produced pretty superior protection in line with getting a primary series from Pfizer or Moderna. So if you're an individual who has gotten the Johnson & Johnson vaccine and you're really concerned about being protected against disease or death, I would highly recommend seeking out one of the Pfizer or Moderna vaccines as your booster dose. Another opportunity that presented itself through this is the ability to mix and match even Pfizer and Moderna. Now there's probably less benefit in mixing or matching those two because they both provide superior efficacy anyways. However, if you're in a location where one of the two vaccines isn't available and you're at that point of time where it's been over six months since your primary series and you're eligible for a booster, it's okay if you go ahead and get one of the other two vaccines. You don't have to stick with your primary series. Overall, very good news on the booster front. We now have some simplicity uh, in alignment between at least Pfizer and Moderna as far as the time frame of when the booster is recommended. That's six months from the primary series or at least six months. We also have alignment in who is eligible across all three vaccines available in the United States. So it makes it a little less confusing for individuals who might be wanting to seek out a booster. And then the ability to mix and match, I think, is a huge benefit. Again, if you're somebody who got Johnson & Johnson, I would highly recommend you consider getting one of the other two vaccines as your booster. And if you're in an area with limited vaccine availability, you can feel safe getting one of the other vaccines if your primary series vaccine isn't available. So that's a little bit on boosters. There is still a little bit more information to come, particularly we're waiting on a um, decision from the FDA and CDC on giving the vaccines to younger children, namely ages 5 to 11. Um, the FDA has data from Pfizer. It was released this past week indicating excellent efficacy, as we would expect, as well as no surprises when it comes to potential side effects. Obviously, we'll wait and see what the FDA says during their full review and then ultimately the CDC's recommendations as well. Uh, but it looks like within the next several weeks, we could have uh, a vaccine available for even younger age groups. This is important because we are seeing continued increase in the incidence of COVID-19 in kids. And while they may get a less severe infection as part of the whole herd immunity concept, as well as spreading the disease to other more vulnerable persons in the population, they play an important part in that process. And then finally, I do want to mention one important thing for those of you who may be ready to go out and seek a Moderna or a Johnson & Johnson booster dose uh, very soon. You'll want to check with your local health department or your local state authorities in regards to when the booster doses will actually be available. Uh, I know in my area, even though the FDA and CDC have provided their approval, unfortunately, there's usually still another step or two that is required um, in particular from the state health departments to actually update standing orders that allow health departments as well as pharmacies and others to actually administer the vaccine legally. So you may have to wait just a little bit longer before actually rolling up your sleeve and taking the booster, but it shouldn't be too long. I suspect most state health departments will get on that pretty quickly. All right, so I hope that clarifies some of the recent information published about vaccine boosters, who might be eligible and when you might actually be able to get the booster dose if you're in one of those categories that it's authorized for. If you have any additional questions, as always, please leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. And as always, stay safe out there.